We received a number of positive comments and a few additional questions from our first gear-related video. Given its popularity, we thought it might be nice to create a monthly video highlighting some of our gear and how we use it. So, if you like that kind of stuff, you're welcome. In this video, we will focus on some of the iPhone settings we've customized when using the DiveVolk SeaTouch underwater housing to make things easier underwater, including assistive touch, shortcuts, and passcode management. The most important feature we use is assistive touch. Turning assistive touch on enables an ever-present movable button that you can move to any edge of the screen. Tapping that button brings up a highly customizable menu that quickly lets you get to all sorts of great functionality. But it doesn't start out looking like this. We'll go through all our customizations in a minute. But first, to turn that on, go to Settings, Accessibility, Touch, Assistive Touch, and tap the toggle to turn it on and off. Initially, the top-level menu looks like this. Right up front, we saw icons that we wouldn't be using underwater. We can't ask Siri anything, so that can go. And we won't be checking notifications while diving, so that's out as well. We also don't use the custom or device buttons. You can play around with those if you want to see what they do. The home button is a bit of a misnomer because if you tap it when first waking up your phone, it actually goes to the last app opened, which is probably not the home screen. In that case, tap Assistive Touch and Home again, and you should indeed make it home. The only other button we kept was Control Center, which has a bunch of functionality, but the one we use most underwater is Screen Brightness. You can make the screen brighter if you're in the shallows with lots of sunshine, or dial it back a bit when in deeper, darker waters or at night to save some battery life. Now that we have Assistive Touch turned on, let's configure it to something a bit more useful. Right below the Assistive Touch toggle is an option to customize the top-level menu. Tap that to show the current menu options. The quickest way to clean things up is by tapping the minus button until there is only one button left. Unfortunately, you can't clear out the last button but we'll change that a bit later. For now, tap the plus sign until there are eight buttons. The first button we added was lock screen. Battery management is critical if you're shooting high-end video across two or more long dives and can't charge your phone in between. Plus, you probably want some battery left over in case you have an emergency, need GPS to get you back home from a new dive site, or want to catch some land memories on the way back. Locking the screen proactively after each clip can go a long way to save battery life. Here's a pro tip. Do not rely on the iPhone's auto-lock settings. Here's why. We've set this iPhone to auto-lock after 30 seconds of inactivity. For almost every app we tested, the device does lock after 30 seconds, but the camera app stays on for a long time. Even if you aren't shooting anything, the app can stay open and active for 5 minutes or more. Not only is that time with the display on, but the camera is constantly trying to focus, establish white balance, and set a proper ISO the entire time as well. All that activity, when you aren't actually shooting, is wasted battery life. To add lock screen, tap the button you want to change. That brings up a list of predefined actions. Scroll down to Lock Screen, select it, and tap Done. Pretty easy, right? The second button we added was Home. Larger iPhones completely fill the membrane, and we found swiping up from the edge to get home difficult, because that's right where the membrane meets the housing. Either we couldn't hit the right spot, requiring multiple attempts, or we had to press uncomfortably hard, which may increase wear and tear in that single spot over time. In any case, adding home made things much easier. Tap a button, select home, and tap done. The last button in our top row is Control Center, which, as mentioned before, allows you to adjust the screen brightness quickly. 
tap a button, select Control Center, and tap Done. The middle row for us has the camera apps. The one on the right side is Apple's camera app. Tap, select, and tap Done. The next button requires some additional work because it involves a third party app, and they don't appear in the default list of functionality available for assistive touch. In fact, you won't see most of the iOS apps in that list, so if you want quick access to one of those, or a third party app, you'll have to create a shortcut. To do that, open the Shortcuts app. There's a lot of functionality in here, and we're not going to provide a full tutorial. We're just going to do what we came to do and get out. To create a shortcut, tap the plus sign in the upper right corner. Now, for our purposes, tap Open App. Then tap the App button to show a list of available apps. We want to create a shortcut for the Blackmagic Cam app, so we'll select that. Before we forget, let's give this shortcut a meaningful name, because the default Open App is pretty generic. Tap the shortcut name Open App, or the down arrow next to it. Tap Rename, type in whatever new name you want, and tap Done. Tap Done in the upper right corner to finish. You've just created your very own shortcut. So let's get back to customizing Assistive Touch. Now that we've created a shortcut for the Blackmagic Cam app, we can go through the same basic steps as before. Tap the button you want to change, but this time, scroll down to the bottom of the list and you will see a section called Shortcuts, which contains a number of predefined shortcuts as well as any new ones you've created. Tap the one you want to add, tap Done, and it should appear in the top level menu. Our bottom row is reserved for communications. We also created shortcuts for WhatsApp. Messenger, and the phone app, in case we or friends are running late to a dive site. And there it is, our customized assistive touch menu. Tap to wake the phone, tap assistive touch, and then tap whatever you want to do. But there is an optional pro tip we'd like to throw in as well. You may have noticed that we were never forced to unlock the phone. That's because we set alarms to turn passcode management off before and turn it back on after each dive. The reason for this is speed. The only two apps you can access directly from the lock screen without authentication are the flashlight and camera apps. If you want to use anything else, you have to enter your passcode because Face ID doesn't work through the Divolk membrane. Here's what that process looks like. Tap your shortcut, tap continue, Wait for Face ID to fail, tap Use Passcode, and enter your passcode. It's not the end of the world, but when a spotted eagle ray comes along, we want to open Black Magic as fast as possible. If you don't want to turn off passcode due to security concerns, no worries. All of the other customizations in this video will still work. It just takes a few seconds longer to get to some of the apps. We hope this was helpful and or inspires other process improvements for your setup. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for other videos, please let us know in the comments section below. And of course, please consider subscribing to the Tropic Lens channel. Thanks! Smiley face.